Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And by some miracle, I'm Mike. What do you mean by some miracle? Well, Andy, I've spent a lot of the last week trapped in a bank vault. Oh, so that's where you went. Entirely of your own accord, I assume. Man, you and your adventures. Well, how did you get out? So I'm glad you asked, actually. Uh, I used some of the items I found inside the vault to construct a piece of experimental technology called an arc reactor, which I then used to build a super robotic suit, right? Which I then used to escape. Oh, okay. Yeah, I figured it's a waste not to use it anymore, so I thought I'd maybe battle some supervillains, you know, save the universe. Right. Yeah, all I need is a catchy superhero name. Anything spring to mind? Yeah. Big Metal Suit Guy. Needs work. Is any of that you just told me true? Everything except everything. Okay, so how did you get out of the bank vault? The bank manager found me asleep the next morning, cuddling a gold bar. They let you keep it? No, they're actually charging me to clean it. A little oh. bit of drool got in it. So what have you been doing since you got out? So I've been constructing a robotic super suit. I thought we went through this. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, in a recently released video game, The Surge 2. Oh. Soon there will be only two choices. Eternal life or oblivion. Oh, the Surge 2. Yeah, do you remember the Surge 1? No. <laughs> okay, so quick recap. The Surge 1 was uh, Sci-Fi yes. Dark Souls. You had a robotic exosuit. Uh, oh, vaguely. Yeah. Were you like a construction worker yeah, guy? Yeah, exactly. And you, you start in a kind of wheelchair, but you then had you a have hammer, like a, a... And you were on Mars and went, no, wait, that was a red fact. <laughs> no, that's a different game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, the Surge was, was really cool. Uh, you know, very much a kind of... A Dark Souls uh, alike, you know, not in the kind of way where everyone tells me off for comparing it to Dark Souls because it was so similar to Dark Souls, there can be no doubt that it was trying to be Dark Souls. So, like, it's hard and you die a lot and you yep. go back to where you died. Exactly that. Is it like nuts and bolts back. instead of souls? Or? Yeah, it's, it's tech scrap or something, it's some nonsense like that. Anyway, The Search 2 is a sequel to that. Uh, it is the same thing, essentially, from what I can <laughs> tell. More of it. The environment's a bit more varied, so previously it was a kind of construction site sort of mm. um, area. So there was a lot of very kind of almost samey, repetitive, you know, um, industrial scenery. Um, this one's set in a place called Jericho City, so there's a bit more variety. Um, in terms of the, you know, and one of the things that's very different is you're you're sort of fighting a lot more uh, human enemies. Uh, you very much start off like, and you're straight into chopping people's heads off, basically. Wow. Uh, which is a way of unlocking stuff, basically. Like the if stuff you inside people's heads. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the brains, the, brains the precious and precious goos. Yeah. Um, so one of the mechanics that is unique and un unlike Dark Souls is you can target different parts of the body. So oh, okay. um, certain parts of the body will be like armoured and if you do those you can get schematics for weapons and armour bits. Uh, other parts will um, you can chop off for sort of battery charge and things like that. And so when you target an enemy you can then flick around to choose which part you want to hit mm. essentially. And if you build up enough charge you can then hold down X and you do this kind of like execution cut move and if you've targeted someone's head, their head comes off. Oh, um, okay. Or like if you targeted their arm, their arm comes off. Which is fine, but if you've played a lot of Dark Souls, it's very similar, but also the controls are different enough that you will end up cocking it up like fairly regularly. Okay. So for example, the thing where you select the um, the different body parts. In Dark Souls, if you flick the stick, you can flick quickly between enemies. Yeah, yeah. So it means when you're being mobbed by a bunch of people, you can quickly select the, the most threatening target. Uh, obviously, that's a totally different control system in the search, so you'll end up getting absolutely clobbered. Right. It does some weird things. There's weird things where like, you know, normally in Dark Souls, you know, if you stand at a bonfire, then you end up, you know, um, all the enemies come back and you end up recharging and things like that. In the Surge 2, there's like area transitions where that becomes your respawn point, which is really confusing. So okay. I, ended, I ended up with a situation where I went through a door and then I came back through the door and all the enemies had come back and I was in a very narrow corridor and then there's two <laughs> enemies at the end who like oh. mobbed me basically. I was like, okay. well, this kind of sucks. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's definitely not as polished as Dark Souls. It's not that kind of same continuous world that Dark mm. Souls is that everyone loves about it. Um, but on the other hand, um, it's it's passable. You know, it's kind of a, it's a proper seven out of ten sort of job. You know, I, I like the new variety. I think the, the environments look a bit more interesting creatively this kind of city this kind of statue broken statues and stuff yeah. mixed in with the sci-fi does it go for the sort of big bosses like dark souls yeah it does actually and and that you know that, that was something that the first one did really well because it was kind of the bosses were big bits of industrial oh, uh, okay. machinery that had been kind of transformed yeah um and in the very first part of the game you're sort of being stalked by this horrible giant robot panther type thing Damn. um which is kind of crashing around the place which is quite cool it's, it, again it's the sort of thing Dark Souls does, where it gives you a glimpse of the boss like long before you meet it, just, right, to, yeah. just to really freak you out about yeah. it. Um, so yeah, there's this this Panther boss, which I'm I've not played a lot of the game yet, but I'm really not looking forward to meeting <laughs> that guy. You're gonna regret this. Well, as you were talking about just then, do you sort of you upgrade your robot suit as yeah. you go through? To a sort of annoying degree, actually, <laughs> like. Um, okay. So in Dark Souls, it feels like you really have to grind to, and maybe I'm misremembering the start of Dark Souls, but it feels like there's a real grind to just to get to the next level and things. Whereas in, in the Surge 2, certainly at the start, it feels like literally every time you go out and kill a couple of people, you've got enough stuff to come back and level up. So you spend a lot of time in the upgrade screens. Mm. And there's various different sort of mechanics going on, a bit like Dark Souls. There's not just leveling up and, and kind of building up your health, stamina, and your battery charge, but there's also like crafting new weapons that you get yeah. the schematics from inside people's heads, sure. or whatever. Yeah, um, you just pull it, just pull root the around in yeah, there exactly. until you just find this pull out a blueprint. blueprint. Yeah, um, <laughs> covered in viscera. Yeah. Um, and uh, and see, so there's that, and then you can use some of your scrap to upgrade it. But you've got to collect different types of scrap. So there's a lot going on, but it is relatively straightforward to get on board with, uh, which is good because I'm a bit thick. So yeah, it's. It's like if you have a real hankering for a Souls-like game, um, there's this, there's Code Veins coming out as well at the moment. So it's kind of a good time for those There is a kind of dip games. before the, the big AAA releases yeah. start hitting in exactly. October, so if November. If you just have £40 or $60 or whatever burning a hole in your pocket, then uh, feel free to grab the Surge. Otherwise, you might want to wait until it's a, there's, a, there's a few fewer giant games coming out. Yes, or until in a few months' time when it's, it's on Game Pass. Yeah, it's on Game Pass, probably. Hey, Mike, how was Bangkok? Bangkok? Yeah. Yeah, that's where you said you were last week in that voicemail message that you left me. And then it cut out. I said I'm in the bank and it's locked. Oh, oh, well, that explains why I didn't get a postcard then. <laughs> Could read comments instead. Okay, it'll have to do. It is what we call a split screen. And where are we going to go and do some quests? Someone quests. We are following my waypoint. We're going towards the blue square. Follow your waypoint. Waypoint. Yeah. Actually, it's Mike's. We're playing on Mike's account. Yeah. Mike's uh, leveled up as Moe's. A little clip there from last week's show of the week about Borderlands 3 with me and Andy playing in split screen. And let's start with a comment. Berlin Noisette says, Mike is playing Borderlands 3 after all. Well, you really convinced him then. So that's in reference to how we were playing on your account, mm -hmm. not that you were playing because you were locked in a bank vault, no. as we've established. Um, yeah, you got to level oh, five or six or seven before yeah. we took it off your hands mm -hmm. and started playing. It's fine, and I've stopped now. Oh, I've stopped playing. <laughs> I was just about to say, have you continued? No. no. That was your entire Borderlands 3 career. It was... You it's are notoriously fun. a Borderlands... Um, it just doesn't do not it even for a hater, me. Just not, yeah, I don't an indifferent. I feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's fine. Like I, I understand why people like it. I have nothing against people who do like it. But <laughs> that's it very really, magnanimous of you. It doesn't grab me. I know you. You, it's weird. you don't like that sort of numbers-led yeah. shooter. It's kind of very like loot shooters. Just I, I think in general, I, I sort of struggle with. Um, but of the sort of two big loot shooters, Borderlands and Destiny, I kind of prefer the way the guns and things feel in Destiny. Okay. So I think that's why I sort of gravitate more. Is it a little that. too much number crunchy RPG and not enough first person shooting? Yeah, I think that's it. I, I feel like a lot of the weapons just don't feel like they've got a lot of impact. I know there's a lot of weapons in Borderlands mm -hmm. and that's very clever and, and fun, but um, a lot of them just don't feel like they 
having a lot of impact and then when they're not doing a lot of damage either to mm. the enemies and stuff it just feels a bit like you're just spraying a pea shooter around. Whereas Destiny in contrast is yeah. at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Big old, yeah, big old guns, guns that yeah. feel really super mm. satisfying. Mm. I think that's what uh, it's, that's not it's not so much that Borderlands does it badly necessarily, but it's that Destiny does it really, really well. And sure. I think that's why loads of people love that. Um, okay. I would say my favourite Borderlands game is the pre-sequel, which is the one that wasn't made by Gearbox, Okay, okay. Because uh, I thought that? it was a bit, I thought the writing was fun. I liked the kind of low gravity stuff, the kind oh, of yeah. oxygen mechanic and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the Borderlands oh. game for me. So maybe I'll just go back and play that. Sorry, Berlin, was it? It's um, sorry. It's another six, seven level Borderlands for you. It's not you, Berlin, was it? It's definitely me. And also, it's not you, Borderlands. It's definitely Mike. Jason N, on the other hand, says, for those of you born during the 2000s, this is what we call split screen. It used to be standard in multiplayer games. Quit your noise. Noise. Yay! Yes. Dead forever. Dead forever. Exploded. Oh my Whoa, gosh. It's yes. Like Christmas loot. Oh my god, looting. Whoa. I love you. Oh. oh god, has this aged us that we know what split screen is? Maybe. I mean, I wasn't, but I can, I can tell you right now, I wasn't born in the 2000s. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I miss split screen. It's fun. No one gets together anymore. No one talks anymore. Everyone's looking at their Everyone's phones. Everyone's looking at their phones. No one lives in the moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, split screen's great. It's fun. Um, like, I think as a, like a as a really basic like value thing as yeah, well, yeah. like that you can get two people's worth of entertainment. Well, I will qualify of, that by yeah. saying con extra controllers are really bloody uh, expensive. Yeah. But it's like forty have, quid for a, yeah, an yeah. Xbox. It's like if you yeah. have multiple controllers yeah, though, it goes from being an experience of one person playing while another person <laughs> sits and watches. Yeah. So like, you know, something we can all enjoy. We, we played it in, in on Gears 5, right? And that the, the game didn't seem oh, yeah. to like drop dramatically in terms of visual quality. Yes, like it was yes. really, it looked really, really impressive. And someone was saying you can play that three player split screen if you want. That's bonkers. In campaign, yeah. But you'd need a much bigger TV than yeah. I have. And more than one friend, which oh, I yeah. don't have. And you have to get them together in yeah. one place at one time. Seems unlikely to me. Um, yeah, it's a strong recommendation for a bigger TV though, because we were playing Borderlands 3 on split screen here in the studio, mm. and the TV is not enormous. Huge, yeah. And so you end up with that kind of like skinny bar of, yeah. of, of gameplay. To look and, at. And, like and in Borderlands, there's a fair amount of information to take mm. in. There's a fair amount yeah, a lot of, of like menus and interface and, interface and, and, and numbers, yeah. as we said. So it's a. It, I will. I don't know. I'll, I'll forgive a split screen game a lot of stuff though, mm. because it is such a treat. Yeah. To play anything in split screen. I'll also say this: it, it make the most of it right now because we're at the end of a generation, and that's uh, when split screen tends to. That's why it's When people happening. have mastered the engines and it's not so much of a struggle to get the graphics working, mm -hmm. that's when they can start splitting it up and 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 provide two separate bits of game. So get ready so for Project great. Scarlet. Yeah, Project Scarlet. No split screen. Split screen's going to be gone for another ten years. Seven years. So yeah, exactly. Make the most of it while it's here. <laughs> it, I mean, it is a big technical demand yeah, to, to yeah. pull off a split screen game. So. So, yeah, enjoy it while you can. One, two, three, four, five, six says, Jane, I knew you were evil, but I didn't know you were this evil. Who records in vertical? Mike and Andy, you are excommunicado. Oh, not again. People are coming to get you. What did you do this time? There's a 50 million dollar bounty on your head. What are you going to do? Well, I think I'm probably going to hide in a bank vault. I'm going to kill Mike and take a 15 million dollar bounty. What? That's obviously in reference to how I filmed some of the John Wick Bank vault yes. escape room on my phone in vertical. You were filming on a GoPro. I had a GoPro strapped to my chest. In landscape, <laughs> yeah. the way God intended. <laughs> and I was filming vertical because. On, on the seventh day, God said, Thou shalt. The 16 by film 9 aspect in ratio. landscape. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree. It is evil to film stuff in portrait. It's just. But it's so much easier to hold the phone. I, I did it without even thinking about it. What can I say? Mm. I can only apologise fully and without. Um, yeah, without uh, re restraint, because I, I think it's just that's the way I hold my phone. Yeah. And that's how I'm accustomed to taking photographs, photographs yep. in portrait, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, who takes a selfie in landscape mode? At least Maniacs. Yeah, yeah, I know, that would be, but, unless you've got an extremely <laughs> wide, wide face. face. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess uh, it was a it was a tense, stressful situation in locked in that bank vault, mm. as well, you Tell know, me Mike. About it. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I think it's just, um, I think it's to do with holding it one-handed as well, yeah. because we were like doing an escape room, mm -hmm. and like you could kind of use both hands if you're only filming in yeah. portrait. Does that make sense? I mean, sort of. It's like, just landscape's a lot just a little to, bit less wieldy. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, these are all these are all terrible excuses for a great crime. So I you, did, you didn't commit the cardinal sin, What's which that? is to start in vertical and then in the middle ooh. go, ooh, oh, ooh, no. and rotate it because then no, I'm evil. That's I'm chaos. not an anarchist, that's, Mike. That's that's yeah. Yeah. That's well, chaotic evil right yeah. there. So, um, oh, we could do like a moral, moral alignment chart for, of how you film videos yeah, on exactly. your phone. Like, yeah. Oh, OK. I'm going to have to go away and think about that one. All right. Who's ready for another video? <laughs> yes, me. Oh, the door's open. The door's open. Go, go, go. The door's open. Go, go, go. Oh, OK. OK. Oh, 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 you can throw, throw it at him oh, and okay. just sat down. Yeah. Yeah. From close range. <laughs> oh, 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 the claw stuck oh, in his oh, brain. No. That was a clip from this week's Hitman 2 video. Yeah. In the New York bank. Had Speaking to of remind banks. Remind me of the bank vault. <laughs> it's a bank vault heavy week. <laughs> it really is. A couple of weeks, in fact. Yeah. Um, it was a great escalation. Yeah, though. it was really good fun. Long the video. Was good. Yeah. Took us a while as well. Yeah, was it was. Um, it was tricksy, and I really enjoyed it. It's quite a long video if you haven't seen it, but well worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, really a solid escalation. And if you haven't played it and you have Hitman 2, definitely check it out. It was called the. Dalton dissection? dissection. That's the one, yeah. It's uh, electrocution themed. Yes. You need the season pass or the, it's DLC. Yes. Um, yes. But it's it was well worth it. Jolly good. Um, and here's a comment. Bilbo T. Baggins says, Future Xmas challenge, who can make the biggest body pile? You saw a pile of three bodies. Maybe stay away from it. Oh no. Is, Is he, he going to run, run away? Yeah. I don't Is think he a runner? He's a guard. Oh, no, he's okay. wait, wait. no, he's coming. He's coming to help his friend. What an idiot. Idiot. <laughs> oh. oh. Yes. Yes, body pile. <laughs> now, I've made a note of this because we're keeping a document mm. of future Christmas challenges yes. for this Christmas. If you have any genius ideas, mm. let us know now and we'll take a note. But it's we because you built a body pile. I did to, to wedge the door open, yeah. Uh, we did do it in Dishonored. Do you remember we did a body pile Christmas oh, challenge was, in Dishonored? Um, guard stacking, Yeah, trying to yeah, stack them. Corpse stacking, like but how high can you get it? Because um, the, the, the sort of free son of risk in those things is, is the game going to break before you manage to construct a a sort of satisfying heap of, of bodies. Yeah. Um, you wonder whether it's going to start like despawning things and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, we could do that in Hitman. We could do a body pile challenge. I think in Hitman, in Hitman. 2 it would have to be uh, maybe like time based. Yeah. Like you've got 10 minutes or five minutes to gather as many bodies as yeah. possible and kind of, yeah. because you could do things like um, booby trapping a water puddle yeah, with electricity and, in, and yeah. then just luring people over and then they'll all just pile up, pile up. Don't like give that. away your strategies just in case oh, no. you don't get the challenge. <laughs> Jane. Oh no, I shouldn't have shouldn't have said that, but it's all banked up here. Mm. Banks! <laughs> Bloody banks. Yes, because the door was automatic, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was gonna slide shut unless mm. you wedged a person. Any, I could have there. wedged anything in there, but a person was just what came to hand. Yeah, people kept coming mm. over to inspect the person and then inspect the person that inspected the person and then yeah. they just piled high. So we've made a note. People. Thanks for the thanks for the suggestion. A comment here from Nick of the Living Dead who says, Watching the three of you struggle with the door to the electrocution victim was so much funnier knowing all you needed was a crowbar to open that door. And there is one immediately to your left at the starting point of the escalation. For the big three. There he goes. Quick, right. You're going to need to get in after him. Quick, quick, quick. Open the door. Yeah. Run in, run in, run in, run in. Yes. And yes. Okay, hammer him. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. And now, right. now wedge, the him to wedge the door. Pacify her open. as well. So that's news to me. Yeah, and me. <laughs> that was a crowbar. Yeah, and apparently so. And you can so. wedge that door open, not with the pile of bodies, but just a crowbar. But it's so much more fun to pull the fire alarm yeah. and, you know, everyone go rushing around. And yeah. we really profited from that chaos, which I think is the important thing. Yeah. Um, and it was fun. Just it was propping fun. a door open with, yeah. with a body is, yeah. I think, more fun than wedging it open. It was uh, much more comedic value. Mm. But it does go to show we're not very rigorous at like searching the level. We spent about half an hour looking for the keys. Yeah. The blimmin' keys. They to, were in uh, a very dark corner on a very dark chair. Yes. In our defence. In our defence. Well, because they, they would normally be like on a guard who was asleep on that chair. Yeah. But we'd set the fire alarm off. So, so sabotaging yeah. ourselves with our own chaos. Uh, what did this key even for? Uh, it was for the van, wasn't it? it was oh, to escape van. from the level, that was um, it. Yeah, I, we like we love Hitman and we play a fair amount of it, but we don't know where all the objects are in every level. We've just not played that much of it, unfortunately, because there are other games to play, yeah. apparently. Yeah, um, but, yeah. But yeah, um, I, you know, Hitman... No regrets. We, we, we never claim to be good at Hitman, but we are enthusiastic, and yeah. I think that's the more important That's what thing. shines through. <laughs> at least that's the, my line, and I'm sticking with it. All right, one more comment. Ace Batman 2019 says, 
Time traveling hitman is just Bald Assassin's Creed with Diana instead of Sean Hastings. Now, car battery. Uh, if they were a real jerk, they would have taken away the car battery and made <laughs> me find a different one. Nah. But here we go, lovely car battery. Maybe that's the final Yay. escalation level. Yeah. No uh -oh, car I've cursed anymore. it. I've jinxed it for you, Andy, now. <laughs> the final escalation, electricity was never in. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go and reinvent it. Yeah. Electricity. Travel back in time. Yeah. Talk to Tesla. Yeah. Michael, become Michael Faraday died <laughs> young. You have to travel back in time and yeah. become Tesla's Yeah, grandfather. Father, yeah, okay. I imagine Hitman with time travel. Oh, it'd be incredible, wouldn't it? Do you remember what this is in reference to? Did we say that a time-travelling assassin game would be really good and we'd all definitely play it all the time? I think we did say that. Yeah. And we said that because uh, Andy's escalation. So yes. Andy did the third part and he was like, what could possibly be more difficult than, than the first two levels? Mm. And he was like, or so, oh, you maybe said, what if electricity was never invented? Oh, yes. And that sent no, us off on one about yeah. <laughs> a time-travelling Hitman game where you have to go back in time and make sure electricity was invented. Which it has been pointed out is sort of the plot to Assassin's Creed. Um, yeah. But how do we know that all the assassins aren't maybe just wearing wigs? Maybe they're all 47. They're all 47 the ancestors. Ultimate crossover, yeah. But 47 isn't, a, he's a clone, not, um, not an That's assassin. True. Maybe and he's cloned from assass an assassin I bloodline. Will go and revise my fanfic <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, I do like the idea of Sean Hastings being like a not bum in the game. bumbling. No, <laughs> being Sorry. like a bumbling <laughs> Diana. Yes. <laughs> Diana is so kind of like composed yeah, and, and with it. And knows Sean stuff, is. Yeah. Well, Sean knows his stuff as well, but in a sort of a more haphazard way. Yeah, bumbling academic kind yeah. of a charming way. Oh, look who's here. So you didn't forget, after all, you're just incredibly rude and made poor Rebecca here wait for nearly 30 minutes. Imagine if 47 desynchronized every time you killed more than two civilians. You would never get anywhere. Trouble, yeah. That would that would be the end of your hitmanning career, Mike. That's true. That's never going to work, is it? Desynchronization. Yeah. Population, Agent 47 Mike. never killed civilians. <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, yeah. we're in trouble According now. to you, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well. OK, those were the comments for this week's Comments mm, Corner. Thank you so much for them. Yeah. We'll see you again. And yeah, and, 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 and let us know. Christmas challenges. Yes. So it doesn't come to like December the 12th and we're like, what should we do for This is the face I would pull. Yeah, so any bright um, ideas, leave them in the comments. Yeah. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the show, why not share it with your family, friends, colleagues, neighbours, local pizza restaurants. Local pizza restaurants. Yeah, I'm trying to get mine to see me in a video. I want a discount. Right. Can you also ask them to press a like button? Yeah, so sure. At it? Why don't you all press the like button as well? I like Chinese food, Indian food, Fish and chips. Yeah, food is good. Thanks for watching. We'll I'm see you next time. Really getting into Korean barbecue at the moment. So what's it like inside a bank vault? Well, I had the company of my friend Goldie to- oh, uh, The gold bar. No, the uh, 90s drum and bass icon. Oh, he was in there with you? No, the gold bar. Oh, it was a gold um, bar. Did he draw a little face on it? Like yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Wilson. We were talking to it. And you know what the really cool thing is? You know, when you start to snuggle up, it starts off cold, but then some of your body heat transfers to Goldie and then it gets a little bit warmer. I don't know what to say to that, really. I, you're in a loving, romantic relationship with a bar of gold. Yeah. But here's the dilemma. It's worth quite a lot of money. Yeah, I know. Someone will literally offer you tens of thousands of pounds for a night with your gold bar. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do? More than a night, probably. Yeah, well, yeah, probably. <laughs> An existence. Well, yeah, well, then I'll have to reconsider the relationship, it's probably. The, it's the new indecent proposal. You what mean, will you do? You mean nothing to me, Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> the bar, not the drum <laughs> no, mate. I like him. You like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah.